it's a group it's a group of people who are afraid to think on their own. Mm, that's deep. They are. It really is. And that's why they're so easily manipulated. It's just like I mean, people are still I haven't talked to my mom about it, but I've talked to other people who I knew were Jehovah's Witnesses who still have no clue about this whole pedophile pedophile thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a it's a, an attack by, by Gog of Magog. Who the hell is Gog of Magog? <laughs> I mean, I know what I mean, we're just coming up with new names now. I mean, so when the Catholics when that whole pedophile thing happened with the Catholics, was Gog of Magog messing with them too? <laughs> I mean I mean, when the Muslims have their bomb, when they blow up something, is that Gog of Magog? I mean, you can't just say it only applies to you guys, <laughs> you know. At some point, you have to have some kind of accountability. Yeah, we fucked up. We've been we've been harboring pedophiles, you know. Mm-hmm. We've been punishing some people and letting other people slide. We're not just letting them slide. We're moving them up in the organization. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's just it's crazy. And I just, I can only see it getting, because when I went back to get reinstated, I I remember I remember looking at stuff before I went back and thinking, wow, this stuff is kind of loony, you know? Mm-hmm. But when I went back, and just listening to those people talk, I said, wow, they really sound crazy now. <laughs> yeah. You know? Like, it's like, I'm just, Am I really hearing this? You know, and I mean, somebody. I I joined a XJW group online, a support group, and it was for it's for gay, lesbian, transgender, bisexual XJW, and it's done wonders for me. I mean, one by somebody was posted something about the whole. It was a talk that a brother gave about Armageddon. And I remember I had heard this talk when I was Jehovah's Witness. I had just forgot about it. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I heard, but I remember when I heard the talk when I was Jehovah's Witness. To me, it was so exhilarating and so wonderful. I'm like, wow. But I listen to it now, and I'm just like, this is the craziest stuff I have ever heard in my life. <laughs> like he was talking about when Armageddon happens. After that, it's going to be a great cleanup. And, you know, imagine we're going to be having to clean up the bodies and of people who are, who were against Jehovah and, you know, and, but the birds are going to come and eat them first and then we'll have to clean up the little bit that's left, you know, and, <laughs> he said, but it will be all the homosexuals and thieves and stuff. And it's like, I'm just like, this is, really? Because <laughs> I'm just like. Just little kids listening to this stuff. That is the craziest stuff I've ever heard. Right. And I mean, he was so fervent about it. Like, the birds are going to come and eat their eyeballs and eat their tongues and skin off and flesh off off their dead bodies. And then we'll come in and we'll clean them up and there won't be that much left because God will have done the most of it through the birds. And I'm like, what? (laughs) (laughs) I'm just like, wow. I'm just like, I can't believe. And and that led me... To going back and finding a number of recordings of talks that I had heard before, you know. And each one I listened to, I realized this sounds ridiculous. Mm-hmm. This sounds even more ridiculous. And I'm just like, hey, I realized that I had been brainwashed. Mm-hmm. And now that I was out of it, I could see things clearly, you know. When you're in it, because I remember people got disfellowshipped when I was a kid. And all I knew was I was not to talk to them. And I remember when we would be, people my kind of were extra. They were extra. They would do, you would see them in public and they, mm, you know, <laughs> turn their head up real quick. Oh, yeah. It's like, really, you didn't have to do all that. You just had to just keep walking and not say nothing, you know. Mm-hmm. And one, it was interesting to me. I mean, there's stuff that, I mean, I would do the same thing, you know, just be dramatic about it, just turn real quick, or they said they were just fellowship, all of a sudden I shut down all conversation, you know, but it's weird, because now it's me, 
and I see them, and it's like, one thing is being a nurse or whatever, my mom was telling me, well, I wanted to let you know that you, you work in the medical industry, so if you get any Jehovah's Witnesses, you need to let them know immediately that you're, that you're disfellowshipped. And I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? Mm-hmm. Like, if you come to my ER, and, my, and I have to save your life, I'm not worried about telling you I'm a Jehovah's Witness. I don't care, you know? Mm-hmm. And I said, because, I mean, you don't come in the ER talking about, I'm a Jehovah's Witness, I'm a Jehovah's Witness. Anybody in here, this, this fellowship, let me know now. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, so she was just like, well, it's just that you don't want to, just you don't want to make them uncomfortable and stuff. I said, I'm not going to do nothing but help them. Mm-hmm. I think I said, Mom, that's really ridiculous. And I actually ended up caring for a number of Jehovah's Witnesses, you know. I mean, for, frankly, fortunately, I never had to deal with the blood issue with the Jehovah's Witness because I think that's the biggest bunch of bull, especially working in the medical industry. The safest blood that you can get is blood that we give you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? especially with all the stuff that they have nowadays. And I mean, the other thing that's sort of weird to me was, how can you accept organs, but you can't accept blood? That's a good point. Because blood runs through organs, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it was was always some weird, and I mean, you just have to look at stuff. I mean, once you're out, I don't know how long you've been out of the organization, but once you look at it and you've been out for a number of years you look at it and you're like wow I can't believe I believe that Mm -hmm. you know I can't believe I looked at people the way I did you know I remember Mm -hmm. there were people that I was so rude to and I was was under the excuse of I don't have to be nice to them they're not Jehovah's Witnesses they're Mm -hmm. not going to be around they don't want to be a Jehovah's Witness, so why I have to do with them? You know, mm-hmm. it really was like this elitist thing, you know. And I'm just the most not not elitist person I know. Mm-hmm. I'm not for all that. I just wanna I want to be happy, and I think that's what all of us should be striving for: is to be happy. And if you're not happy, you should be questioning that. Very good point. And changing it, you know. For years, I did not want to admit why I wasn't happy. Because to, for me to say being Jehovah's Witness was why I wasn't happy was against Jehovah. Mm-hmm. And the whole thing is <laughs> Jehovah doesn't care. It doesn't. None of that matters to him. It doesn't. Being long to the organization. If it's going to get you nowhere, Mm -hmm. that's not what he's looking at. God looks at who you are as a person. You can't tell me because I sleep with men, I'm more in trouble than Jeffrey Dahmer. Mm -hmm. You mean, this he over here, not just sleeping with men, he cooking them and eating them. (laughs) But you mean to tell me I'm worse than he is? You know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's the weirdest thing. And if the other thing is like, there's this whole thing with gay people, even people who are not Jehovah's Witnesses deal with this. This is not a choice. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you were molested. I don't care if you weren't molested. You didn't choose to be this way. Nobody would ever make this kind of choice. This is just who you are. This is who you were made to be. There's a reason behind it. God knows. But you won't know until he tells you. And maybe there's nothing for him to tell you. Except for just you be you. Be who he made you to be. There's beauty in everything. There are, I mean, you look at some of the things in nature that are just so weird and odd. But there's a beauty to that oddness. There's a beauty to the strangeness of it. Mm-hmm. You know, the reason why the rules were written in the Bible about homosexuality 
was because they didn't understand it. There were not a bunch of homosexuals in one area. There was maybe one or two, but what they mostly were talking about was marrying women. You know? I mean, if you look at some of the most ancient cultures, homosexuals were revered. They were held as high spirits. You know? The only ones who really are gifted are the ones who are Christians and Mm -hmm. Muslims. You know, mm-hmm. in the Indian culture, in Indian culture, they were called dual spirit people because they were thought to have the spirit of both a man and a woman. Wow! And they were seen; they were very high in Indian, in the Native Americans. They were held very high. Mm. They were revealed as gods and goddesses, kind of. You know, but it's just. That, that they found that beauty and what might have normally been thought of odd, out of odd, you know. There was no big deal. There was no, and that is, and the cultures that you see that are really, really spiritual cultures, like Buddhism, and the Native Americans, their traditions and ideals, you see the realness and the trueness of, I think, what God meant, mm-hmm. what God wanted for us. If you look at the at religions and stuff, religion is nothing else but something to control and divide. You got the Christians fighting with the Muslims, and the Muslims are fighting with the Sunnis, and the Sunnis, are, you know what I'm saying? It's just where is the where is the unity? And I mean, you can just look at that as a person that's been in religion and oppressive religion or whatever. I look at that and I say, that's not God. It's obvious to me. It's not God. Mm-hmm. You know. Just like anybody should be able to look at that and say the same thing. You know, and I mean, anything or anyone that tells you you're not worthy, you're not worthy, you're not worth it, you're worthless, you're not, you're second class or whatever, that is not of God. I can promise you that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the one thing I tell people all the time, meditate. Learn to meditate. Learn to connect with yourself. Get yourself in balance. And when you get yourself in balance, you connect yourself to God. You connect yourself to that higher being. And when you can feel that energy flow through you, you know. You know. But the biggest thing to anybody, I want them to know, there's nothing wrong with you. I sat in those I went home and cried a bunch of times. I sat and deep and cried. It was just because I was constantly made to feel like something was just broken and I needed God to fix it. Mm -hmm. But reality was there was nothing to fix. And I know now that God told me that several times in my life. I just wasn't listening. You know, he constantly was telling me, Derek, there's nothing to fix. Derek, you're fine. Derek, I love you who you are. Derek, I made you who you are, be who you are, I love you. You know? Mm-hmm. But I still was in that mentality of, I'm a Jehovah's Witness, and they are saying this. And that's the whole thing is you have to get out of what imperfect men are saying. Anthony Morris, Brother Jackson, Brother Hurd, all of them. They're imperfect men, mm-hmm. truthfully. I don't care if they say they're going to heaven and they're 144,000 and all that crap. They're imperfect men, according to the Bible, if that's what they believe. Because, so what you saying ain't no more special than what I'm saying. If you are as imperfect as you are, saying the message you say, then Jehovah must be talking to me as well. He must be able to talk to me as well. Because you are just as imperfect as I am. There's no levels to imperfection. There's just imperfect. Period. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what people need to realize. You're not... The governing body isn't no special group of people. You know what I'm saying? 
And I mean, the other thing is, one of the things that I got in trouble out when I was Jehovah's Witness was, I was told I asked way too many questions. My whole thing was, why aren't there Asian governing body people? <laughs> what happened to the French governing body people? You know, why isn't there African governing people from Africa on the governing body? Mm-hmm. You know, why is it, why is the governing body only in America? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Shouldn't they have other governing bodies in other places? <laughs> right. You know? Mm-hmm. And they do. Well, no. Because these are the ones that God has selected. And it's just like, well, how do we know God selected them? They told us that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I remember there was a woman in our congregation, and she was actually crazy. But one day she came in and she started saying she was probably 144,000. <laughs> and they just said she was crazy. And I'm just like, I believed her. And I was like, she's probably 144,000. She's probably 144,000, you know? And I was they're just like, no, she's not. No, she's not. Well, who are you to tell her she's not? Mm-hmm. How do you know that they are? Well, they said they were. Well, this. She is. So she must be, <laughs> you know. And so it's just like, I mean, man, it was just stuff like that. That was in my later teen years, and I was starting to get on everybody's nerves because I was like, this is a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> you know? But it's just like, well, she, I, you know, and it was, <laughs> I would come in, I would curtsy to her. <laughs> <laughs> and she'd be like, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and they'd be like, breath of near, stop doing that. And I'm like, I'm sorry, whatever. <laughs> but she was, I mean, but that was the whole thing. Like, they are part of the 144,000 because they said they are. You know? I mean, and my thing is this. If the 144,000 was picked back in Jesus' day, don't you think there was 144,000 people that he would have picked to go to heaven before we all showed up all these years later? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, Jesus, what was that? 2015 years ago? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you mean to tell me in 2015 years, there were 144,000 people in that earlier 2015 years that until now? Please. No. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. And I just don't know. I don't know where they get their their facts from. They're like, I mean, they put out these magazines with these numbers and stuff, and they say, well, this happened, and then the stone rolled and hit the statue, and that meant that this happened, and then in 1914, God picked Jehovah's Witnesses as his earth. I'm just like, well, how do we know God picked us as their organization, Mm -hmm. as his organization? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, well, we just know, because, okay, well, then the sky is red. Why is it saying this? I just know it's red. You know, I mean, if I mean, if we're just going off of people making proclamations, let's all make some proclamations. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how I feel about it. Right. <laughs> I mean, Marcus, you could walk up to me and say, hey, I'm a white man. I'm going to look at you like, okay, Marcus, that's what you say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, but I'm not going to look at you and be like, okay, no, Marcus says he's white. You know, <laughs> I guess we just go ahead and say Marcus is white now. You know, I don't know. <laughs> just because you say you white don't mean you white. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. <laughs> just like okay, just like okay, Anthony Moore is looking at me, telling me I'm of the hundred forty four thousand. I'm going to heaven. Well, all I see before me is an imperfect man. Mm-hmm. So when you get to heaven, you let me know, mm-hmm. and we'll go from there. <laughs> but in the meantime, you can't tell me nothing. So hush. <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's really how I feel about it. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that's just... And it's so funny because I look at myself now compared to how I was a Jones Witness, and it's so different. I would have never said nothing like this. Like, even my thinking on the Bible is a fairly... Not new belief, but a new understanding I have. I have, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. like I don't look at the Bible as God's word, and 
Because I don't think it, it was, it's called God's word, so people don't question it. Mm. But that's another great thing about God is he wants you to question everything. Mm-hmm. Nobody should blindly follow anything. Mm-hmm. If you have a question about something, ask. Find out. Do your research. You know, the funny thing is I tell people who talk to me about Jehovah's Witnesses, I tell them, do, their, do your research. Find out how that organization started, who started it, what kind of person they were. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you look at all that, you're like, oh, okay. You know, there's this whole, there's a whole lot of information. I mean, the, the I honestly think the worst thing the society could have done was to become this more open like they did. Mm-hmm. Because now there's the internet. You can find out anything on the internet. I mean, they're all over Instagram and everything. JW.org this and JW.org that. And it's like, they've pretty much put a spotlight on themselves. Mm -hmm. You know? So that's why people are now like, well, wait a minute. What are y'all doing? Because y'all been awfully quiet. Mm -hmm. You know? And now you just explode on the scene. And the whole thing is I've watched, I've been looking at a lot of that when I was going to get reinstated. I was really into the whole JW.org thing, but I was I got blown away because I'm like, there's buttons, there's shirts, there's badges, there's bags, and it's like all this stuff, and I'm just like, I thought we weren't supposed to be into um, idolatry. Mm-hmm. Because essentially they've created this idol, mm-hmm. and it's everywhere. I saw somebody with it, it was a fake tattoo, but it was a JW.org tattoo on her neck. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, wow. They're having JW.org birthday, not birthday parties, but JW.org parties. And well, for the kids, they're having, I guess it's so, the Sophia, whatever the little kid cartoon they've made up now. Mm-hmm. Sophia and something. Um, this on JW.org too. And I'm just like, this is odd. This is just strange, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, it's not the same organization. Like, something has happened, and it's just, and it's changed, and it's not changed for the better, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Like, they've taken off, like, I remember when I was growing up, you heard the governing body, but now the governing body is the organization. Right. Like, everything comes from them. Like, there's no deviation from anything that they say. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'm just like, wow, that's a change. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, they're holding these internet conferences, meetings now with them giving talks in every Kingdom Hall. It's, I mean, it was on a night, what was it? It was on a night that we weren't even supposed to have a meeting. Mm. So people who work, what are they supposed to do? And I remember hearing them say you don't want to miss a meeting because there's going to come a time when if you miss a meeting you're not going to know what the next next meeting is going to be and we're not going to be able to tell you what was was talked about like what's going to be going on you know what I'm saying and it's just like and I mean another thing is like my mother is sort of she's real devout and she started doing this thing where she's memorizing the bible from front to back Literally, she reads it every day, all day long. She's a full-time pioneer. She doesn't work anymore. She retired. And, I mean, even though she's struggling and she should be trying to work, and she could, <clears throat> she believes these are the last days and she, this is what she needs to be doing, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I was asking her, I said, what's up with this whole Bible thing with you memorizing it from beginning to end? She's like, oh, well, we're going to be locked up eventually. I'm like, Who? She's like, the witnesses, we're going to get locked up, and they're probably not going to let us have our Bibles. So I want to be able to memorize everything about the Bible I have to say from beginning to end, word for word. I'm like, what is that going to do for you? I mean, okay. You know, and I'm mm-hmm. just like, wow, they really have you wrapped up that tight? Mm-hmm. And she's just like, well, I don't expect you to understand because you you don't want to be a Jehovah's Witness. You don't you don't want to be a Jehovah's Witness. You don't 
you don't love Jehovah and stuff. And I'm just like, I'm just using common sense. There's that word again, mm-hmm. common sense. You know, mm-hmm. it's just, I'm just using common sense. Where are you getting this information that you're going to be locked up? And it's just the, the, the society, the elders are telling you this. Because I guarantee you, they're not going home and memorizing entire parts of the Bible. Mm-hmm. They're, I'm telling you, they're, they tell, they hold their meeting, they tell you the stuff, what you're supposed to do, then they go home and have sex with their wives or whoever else they're going to do it with and <laughs> do what they're going to do and go about their business. While Brenda's still sitting up here, Psalms 1, verse 2. I mean, come on. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it's just like, I'm just like, you are, I'm just like, I asked my mom, have you ever just stopped to enjoy your life, you know, when you go on your vacations with your sisters, don't take your Bible with you, Mm. don't take your literature with you, don't use that as a time to go talk to people about Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, go enjoy yourself, Mm -hmm. well, the the system is coming to an end. We have to do this now. I don't expect you to understand because you're not a Jehovah's Witness anymore. I'm just like, thank God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Because I just don't, I don't, I don't know. That's good. That's good. You've been out of the organization for years and that's the best talk I've heard <laughs> ever. Right. Yeah, man. That's the best talk. That's that. You got the most truth. In that amount of time than I've heard in any talk in, in any hall I've ever been in. Well, I thought I just, I mean, I, I thank you for this opportunity, actually, because I've wanted to do this. Because I've thought about Eddie for years, you mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm. And it's just, I always think of, what if Eddie would have had some help? Right. What if he would have had just one person say, I know what you know what you're going through i'm going through the same thing mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. i mean he may still just, be here huh he may still be here i believe he would mm-hmm. that was one thing when i wanted to get reinstated i, I saw these jehovah's witnesses, ex-Jehovah's witnesses groups on on the on facebook all the time mm-hmm. and i just i stayed away from them I'm, oh they're apostates they're apostates <laughs> you mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to be near them or whatever. But when I when, when I went to get reinstated, when and that day when I went to that branch meeting, and Anthony Morris said that stuff, and after I talked to my mom, the first thing I did was went online and joined every one of the extra Jehovah's Jehovah Witnesses groups I had seen. Mm-hmm. I joined every one, and I was just like, I'm a name so and so. I went to get reinstated. I am not getting reinstated now. I need help. I need support. I need to know what you guys are doing. Right. You know? Right. And everybody.